So welcome, thanks very much coming, for coming to our session. Uh, my name is Peter Harrison. Uh, I work in the Developer Relations Group at Creative Labs Europe. Uh, we're based just near London in the UK. The title of today's session is Next Generation Cross-Platform Audio Technology with OpenAL. So it's a bit of a generic title, I'm afraid. Um, we just want to cover a lot of stuff about OpenAL. I'll give you the structure of today's session. Um, we're going to kick off with basically an OpenAL 101. So there's an overview about the feature set uh, and the different platforms supported by OpenAL. Um, so if you don't know the API already, <coughs> excuse me, that's going to get you up to speed. And if you haven't used OpenAL for a while, then Again, you'll get up to speed with where, where the API is at now. Then we're fortunate enough to be able to hear from a developer who's actually been implementing OpenAL into his cross-platform audio engine, Simon here. Um, he's going to tell you about his experiences, the various challenges and how he's overcome them. Uh, Simon's talk will include some really nice demos, so you must stick around for those. That'll give you a flavor for uh, the kind of effects that you can achieve using the DSP power of OpenAL renderers. Um, so if you're looking at a cross-platform engine, writing one yourself, uh, using OpenAL, then this will be a very important part of the session to look at. And then we're going to finish off, I'm going to take the mic back, and I'm going to talk about some research that's ongoing at Creative, uh, which is going to result in some exciting new features, some exciting new DSP and routing opportunities. So I'm going to have some demos there as well. So, okay, as I said, we're going to recap, uh, have a sort of OpenAL 101, recap the features of the platforms. I'll start with the platforms. Uh, the PC, of course, is Creative's home platform. So we manufacture and sell PC sound cards, and our sound cards are uh, hardware accelerators for OpenAL. So that's why we're concerned with the development of the API. Uh, we write our own implementations. Uh, we evangelize the product or the, the API. Uh, clearly, as well as supporting our hardware, it's in our interest that OpenAL supports every single PC out there. Uh, so we do some work to make sure that there's a consistent level of features and quality across all PCs. So I'll talk about that in depth in a moment. The second platform I mentioned there, Xbox 360, uh, it's kind of a close cousin to Windows PC. It's a Microsoft platform, Microsoft write APIs for, for both platforms. And developers working cross-platform often tend to write PC and 360 in parallel. Um, Creative are a registered Xbox 360 middleware provider, so we are licensed to produce libraries for this platform. Um, so we've designed an OpenAL implementation on Xbox 360. Uh, it's got features broadly similar to our XY sound card, to our IO sound card. Uh, and this implementation is available. We don't charge for it, we give that to partners, registered partners of ours who are working on cross-platform titles on PC and 360. So that's out there. I've also mentioned PS3 on this slide. We don't write a PS3 renderer for OpenAL. Uh, but Sony, if you know Sony's European audio team, they're working on, uh, on an API that they call Multistream, and the 3D component of Multistream is kind of inspired by OpenAL, so um, I'm not going to talk about that in great depth, Simon will talk about that more. There's also guys at Sony that you can see if you want to know more about that stuff. Um, at the bottom of the slide, as you're probably aware, it's an open standard API, so there are Linux and Mac implementations as well if you're writing games on those platforms, and some games have been released recently with OpenAL on those platforms. Let's zone in on the PC right now. Um, as I said, we aim to support as many different PCs as possible, and we do that through different renderers. Um, obviously, on a console platform, there's, there's one set of audio capabilities, so there's one renderer. On PC, if you know development on the PC, you'll know that uh, you can come across a number of different, um, different capabilities on your machine. So we try to keep things simple. There's three devices that you would encounter on PC right now. So the, what we call a native implementation is basically straight to the silicon. So that's when a sound card like an x has a driver that directly supports open hour calls. So your calls go straight to the sound card with minimal uh, interference from, from the operating system. Um, so this is important because this gives you access as a developer on PC. This gives your users access to uh, the hardware features on high-end sound cards. So we're talking things like uh, advanced 3D audio, virtualization with HRTF, um, great multi-speaker padding algorithms, hardware reverbs, all this kind of stuff that we do really, really well on hardware. Uh, that's what the native implementation is for. Uh, very quickly, the generic hardware implementation you see in the middle is a wrapper around to make sound 3D. So that's kind of a legacy thing. Uh, if you have a sound card that supports direct sound 3D and doesn't support OpenAL natively, then you can still benefit from those, uh, those features if you write to the generic hardware device. 
And then the third device that you might encounter would be the generic software device. So uh, this is a simple uh, software mixer uh, developed and maintained by Creative, which will give you a basic level of um, features and quality on every system. So I'm just going to talk in more depth about the capabilities of these different devices later. Um, and I've put at the end there, enumeration and extension. We'll talk about extensions later, but it's important to be aware that there's an extension to OpenAL that allows you to query uh, the user's PC, or on PC obviously, it doesn't make any sense on the, on the console platforms, but it allows you to query, find out which of these devices are available, what their names are, so that you can present that information to the user and allow them to make an informed choice about which uh, software renderer, or sorry, which OpenAL renderer uh, they want to play their game with. Okay, a very quick slide here that shows a diagram of how OpenAL is architected on XP. So your application obviously at the top, the router is the bit of software that deals with uh, enumerating these different devices on the user's system. And then uh, the path on the right hand side is our native path. Uh, the wrapper goes through DirectSound 3D, that's in the middle. And then our software mixer can render via um, MME or DirectSound into a direct sound buffer or into a, a plain stereo buffer and then that will be all played back by the audio device at the end. Let's look at Vista, it's a hugely important thing, uh, the new operating system. There's, there's a little bit of change that you need to be aware of in case you're, you're not aware, already aware. The direct sound 3D hardware path goes, so you can't access hardware functions, hardware audio features in Vista uh, through direct sound 3D anymore. So the only way to get to this stuff is using our native implementation on Windows Vista. The software mixer remains um, and we've put in the um, WhatsApp API there, but that's just by the by. Actually, I should mention that we um, provide uh, an intelligent redist uh, to OpenAI developers which you, can, which you can ship with your game, which will put them basically intelligently update a user's libraries with the most up-to-date versions. So we, we take care of that for you.